Can you hear purple? Listen to turquoise? What's the sound of a rainbow? Let's get real. Trying to sell TVs with audio is pretty dumb. So listen to me, Joel McHale. All we want is great looking TVs with our favorite features, like the quality of Dolby Vision IQ, the smarts of Android TV, and the vibrancy of Quantum.color. TVs like the Hisense ULED series. Visit Hisense.com and see for yourself. Hisense, let's get real. On today's Solo Sunday News, we've got the full results from Impact Wrestling's Under Siege pay-per-view, so obviously there's going to be some spoilers in advance. Kenny Omega's next Impact World Championship challenger has been revealed. The Young Bucks respond to rumours of AEW infighting. Paul Heyman pays tribute to New Jack on Talking Smack. And could WWE's Extreme Rules pay-per-view go down in front of fans? Hello everybody, we are back with some slaphead solo Sunday news. That is gimmick infringement. I'm sorry, Mr. Simon Miller, but that is just fine. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but the, the most important thing that we need to get into straight away is the fact there was a big old Impact Wrestling pay-per-view thing that happened last night. It was under siege. There was a lot of matches that we are going to have to just unpack very quickly and go through all the results. There's not going to be an ups and downs video from what I hear from Simon Miller today or this evening. That's just the way it is. So you have to just deal with me jabbering on about what happened and what the fallout is and all the good stuff. So let's get to it. We've got Brian Myers. He defeated Black Taurus in the first match of the night. And then Taylor Wilde and Tennille Dashwood managed to defeat Kimberly and Susan. And that was two big matches out of the way straight away. And then we had the number one contendership match for the Impact Tag Team Championships. And then the teams we had involved with this were obviously TJP and Peter Williams, Rohit Raju and Mahabali Shira. You had Ace Austin and Madman Fulton and Triple XL, which is AC Romero and Larry D. And obviously, if you've seen the event, the, the new number one contenders are now, of course, AC Austin and Madman Fulton. They are now number one contenders to Finn Juice with their belts and all the good stuff. So that's going to be happening at some point in the future. We've got W. Morrissey. He won, I think it was his first pay per view match since Johnny Gimp. Back. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but it was a big thing. He beat Willie Mack. He batted him with his big boot thing and like the, the spin out slam. He's just looking like an absolute shredded machine, that man. And then Fire and Flavor. I always call them Flavor and get mocked a lot in the comment section. So I'm going to start saying Flavor because I, I bow to peer pressure. I'm, I've got a weak mind and a weak heart. Uh, so they defeated Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. So they're now the brand new Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champions. That was a big old title change that we had on the show. And then we had Josh Alexander. He was defending his X Division Championship against El Fantasmo, and he successfully did so. He's still your X Division Champion. Moving on to the Impact Knockout Championship match. Deanna Peraza was obviously defending against Havoc. And again, she successfully did it. We had a lot of successful defenses. They're very good. These champions are the jobs and they keep order of the bouts. But then Eddie Edwards teamed up with Finn Juice to take on the team of Impact World Champion, AEW World Champion, AAA Mega Champion, all the champions, the champion of my heart, the champion of my soul, Kenny Omega, and the Good Brothers. That was his little unit. They had this big six-man tag match, and would you know... Kenny Omega was on the losing side for the first time in what feels like forever. They lost to Eddie Edwards and Finn Juice. He was not best pleased. You can understand that. But the big old main event of this night was the, the six-way number one contendership match thing for the Impact World Championship. And we'll explain what happened in terms of like what where that match is going to be going down the, the next Impact World Championship match straight after this. But that match involved Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, Matt Cardona, Chris Saban, Sammy Callahan, and Moose all going to war battering each other for our entertainment. It's what we like. But in the end, it was Moose. Moose destroyed Chris Saban. He did some very nasty things to him. He just speared him out of his socks. And he's now the number one contender for Kenny Omega's Impact World Championship. And if you want to know where that's going to be going down, that big old match, and it is a big old match, that's going to be going down at against all odds on June 12th, 2021. Obviously this year. Don't know why I said the year. We know what year it is. How could we forget? But on the back of Kenny Omega having this big old Impact World Championship match set up at this event, we also had 
A bit of weird news that trickled out yesterday about some apparent infighting uh, within the elite, within AEW, the or, or the, uh, the the EV, EVPs of AEW. I can get the word out there. The EVPs of AEW. Apparently, some of them aren't on speaking terms. This was according to PW Torch. They said there'd just been a lot of squabbling and falling out between them. So people were instantly thinking, oh, it kind of makes sense because Cody's not really been involved with a lot of the elite stuff since probably before Double or Nothing. has been a bit of a an on on air a separation that's happened so a lot of people thought yeah it kind of makes sense but then the young bucks just being the young bucks they took to twitter and they announced a new bio and if you've been watching them on twitter they love a good new bio it's kind of insane how quickly and how much they changed their bios but for this particular one they said currently not on speaking terms and then cody rhodes retweeted the changed bio thing the new bio tweet that was sent out so it seems like it's probably just a whole lot of nothing it probably isn't anything really to, to write home about but it's a point. We've not seen Cody with the Elite for a while now on, on screen. Obviously, he's had a lot of things to deal with. He's had a lot of nightmare family drama to, to hash out and all the Shaq stuff. But it's a, it's a thing, you know? It's a thing. We've not really seen him just, just conversing with his Elite brethren. So people are going to start talking. I think these guys need to at least shake hands or pat each other on the back on the next Dynamite. Make it happen. Make the, make the, the pat of the backing happen. That's what I like in my wrestling. Yeah. Now, obviously, the biggest story that broke yesterday was the announcement that New Jack had passed away. That was a huge thing in the wrestling world. We had a lot of tributes pouring out for him on Twitter, social media. There's, there's a squared circle on Reddit. It's all those. Like, there's just been a lot of, of um, support and just memories of New Jack and all like his career and the, the impact he had on the industry in general. And Paul Heyman was just the most recent person to to pay tribute to him on Talking Smack this week. He, he had a, a big old... Uh, portion at the end of the show where he just looked straight down the lens and spoke from the heart really and I'm not really going to just break away from this too much I'm just going to read off what he said uh, because yeah it's just quite a nice tribute he said I was asked before this show went on the air if I would like to say a few words about the passing of ECW original New Jack and I avoid eulogies as best I can because anytime I'm faced with them the first thing that comes to mind is hey this sucks and there is no good spin I can put on it when I heard that New Jack had passed away my hope was that New Jack had turned to his wife and said hey I'd like to read my own obituary call a bunch of people and tell them that I died and that everybody is going to make a big fuss about it and I'll read about my own life and then at some point this weekend they'd sell a bunch of t-shirts and he'd sit there and go ah gotcha because that's what New Jack would do and apparently it's not so which sucks and usually when we would pay tribute to someone here in WWE we'd show you a lot of footage of that person and to be blunt we can't show you a lot of footage of New Jack because he was the most non-PG performer in sports entertainment history because New Jack was a gangster and everyone who was a fan of ECW that came to see ECW who watched ECW knew that that fact from the moment his music hit and no we never had rights to use his music why because he was the most gangster of all of us gangsters. And then he went on to just talk about how real New Jack was. And he said, it's over 20 years ago, and anybody that ever saw New Jack perform live or heard him cut a promo understood just how real he was. Jerome Young was quite an individual, but deep in his heart, he was every bit of New Jack that he could offer you. I wish you all a most extreme weekend gangster style. So yeah, like I say, it's just a really nice tribute from Paul Heyman. Um, love it, WWE. Give him the platform, I guess, at the end of Talking Smack, just to speak from the heart and just just not shoot, but do you know what I mean? Just, just say it how it is. And yeah, like I said, many personalities and wrestlers have taken to Twitter and sort of told stories of New Jack over the last day or so, so go and check them out. If you are a big New Jack fan, you, you just want to pay respects to the man. Uh, there's a lot there. But again, just from everyone here at What Culture, thoughts and feelings and everything go out to his family at this time. So our last news story of today centers all around the fact that, you know, fans, that we need fans back in arenas when they can, when it's safe. We want we want to see people again because I'm getting really tired of screens. I just, I've, I've, I've got a screen here. There's screens everywhere. I want live people in attendance. So earlier this week, it was reported by the Matt Men Pro Wrestling Podcast. And these folks are the same people who broke the news that NXT was going to be moving to Tuesday nights, which has changed my week. It's changed my life. So we trust them, I guess, with this kind of source. And uh, WWE apparently are planning on holding ticketed live events 
from July 16th to the July 19th. So from that over that weekend, that's when they, they plan to start like letting fans back into arenas. That's, that's that's the word on the street. So this isn't officially announced at this time, but Extreme Rules, Extreme Rules, the pay-per-view is scheduled for July 18th. Obviously, these things can change. They do change an awful lot. But at this time, it looks like that'll be going down slap bang in the middle of this weekend where fans are supposedly going to be returning. So that's huge. And that's the thing. But right now, on like Wikipedia and on WWE's uh, site, I believe, it is scheduled to be going down in the Thunderdome. But again, things might change. But the Matt Men Pro Wrestling Podcast are reporting that the weekend is looking a bit bigger with fans returning on July 16th, 18th and July 19th. And those dates would line up perfectly with SmackDown, Extreme Rules and Raw. So that could be a big old thing where they have the go-home show to Extreme Rules with fans and all the fans are like, oh my God, things, we're going to see people. The actual pay-per-view and then the fallout from Raw, we could see loads of big returns. I'm, I'm going crazy again now. I'm doing loads of stupid fantasy booking stuff, but it could be cool if we did, did get fans around that time. Um, as like a thing, obviously, don't forget that AEW are also looking to go back on the road around this time. So that might be WWE's thinking, like, oh, if they're doing it, we got to do it because just competitive wrestling nonsense. Yeah. So it's 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 an interesting time because this is a point now where, especially in America, we're seeing indoor events get full capacity crowds. Like just last night, the UFC had a, a UFC 262 event in Houston, Texas, which had a full sellout crowd which was quite surreal to watch. E- even over here in the UK, we had a, the the FA Cup final, which had 22,000 fans, but in a 90,000-seater stadium, so it was quite spread out, whereas UFC, it was like, everyone's packed in. But I just, I just want to make sure everyone's safe, as long as everyone's safe, and there's all the protocols being followed. It's all just being well organized and everyone's getting in and out safely i'm fine with this i'd I'd love to see everyone back but that is the most important thing don't just cram people back into a stadium just because you want to one-up the the competition that's not a good thing but just fingers crossed if it does happen everybody's safe right so we're going to round off this solo sunday news in the only way we know how and that is with twitter questions oh yeah we got some twitter questions coming at you right now so the first one is from mark Solod, he said, morning, Gareth. Happy Solo Sunday. Hope you had a great week and digging the new look because if you didn't know, my hair fell off. I'm, I'm going with it. I think you should too. I don't remember what brands Naya and Shayna are on, but which shows and feuds do you want to see them break off into? Hashtag Solo Sunday News. Uh, I don't even know what. I think, I think they're on Raw. I think they are on Raw right now. So personally, and I think I've, I said this in maybe a throwaway line on the SmackDown Review podcast or on the news, can't remember, but I'd like to see Shayna Baszler going to war with Rhea Ripley on my Monday Night Raw screens. Don't ruin it with just stupid nonsense booking. Just have them fight. Have them fight like absolute, insanely talented women, just what they are, really, and just go to war week after week and have that over the Raw Championship, the Raw Women's Championship. It'll feel so much more prestigious when you've got these two badasses trying to kill each other for it. That is what I want out of Shayna Baszler. Nia Jax, have a beat up Reginald. A lot. And our last Twitter question comes from Dustin Sensenig. I hope I got that right. That's at StarWarsFan87. Said, hey Gareth, happy Solo Sunday. Since late 2019 till now, I have seen a ton of segments, both in-ring and backstage, on all three WWE brands. The disrespect you just showed to NXT UK and 205 Live, I'm assuming. Which has been the most enjoyable and most cringeworthy. Which, sorry, which has been the most enjoyable and most cringeworthy in your opinion? Ah. Right, that's a <laughs> that's a big old tin of worms we're going to open. Um, I remember distinctly last year, and I think it was me, Phil Chambers, and Michael Hamlet had to unpack it on a on a review podcast. But I remember the Miz, John Morrison, and Braun Strowman backstage segments with a whole lot of slime and weird, stupid pranks. And I was cringing all the way through it. I believe Michael Hanford loved it. I think he was all about it, weirdly enough. I think, I think he was a big fan of the, the slime sludging and everything else. But I was not a fan. I was cringing an awful lot. That's just in the last couple of years. If you want to go back even further than that, you got your Callisto stuff, doing Lucha, Lucha stuff. There's, there's, been, there's been so many. But let me know in the comments section, you guys and girls out there all around the world, what's been your favourite or least favourite cringe-wordy, cringe-wordy, king-wordy, what is happening? Cring, cringe-worthy segment of the year it went really well up until this point didn't it so i have been gareth from what culture wrestling not being able to say cringe worthy don't forget to like the video share the video 
But don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe to all things What Culture Wrestling, and have the best day in the world that you can possibly have. Make it even better. Follow me on Twitter at gmorgan04. Follow everyone at What Culture at What Culture WWE. I'll probably see you at some point down the road. I may not be here for Solo Sunday next week. Maybe I will. Maybe I'm not. I'm, I don't know. I'm going all Brock Lesnar. I'm just being a part timer. They got to pay me those Brock Lesnar money dollars to make me come back. Now I'm probably just going to have a holiday. That's what's going to be happening. So we will see you at some point in the future. Until then, have the best Sunday. You deserve it. We deserve it. You deserve it. I'm sorry. Can you hear purple? Listen to turquoise? What's the sound of a rainbow? Let's get real. Trying to sell TVs with audio is pretty dumb. So listen to me, Joel McHale. All we want is great looking TVs with our favorite features, like the quality of Dolby Vision IQ, the smarts of Android TV, and the vibrancy of Quantum.Color. TVs like the Hisense ULED series. Visit Hisense.com and see for yourself. Hisense. Let's get real.